This right here is the Void Waker, one of the strongest PvP weapons in Old School RuneScape. The weapon can be created entirely inside of the wilderness, and that is why I decided to make a new level 3, lock it into the wilderness, and not look back until I've created one of my own completely from scratch. My account is a Bronze Man, which is a mix of an Iron Man and normal account. If I get an item once, I can buy it as much as I want from the Grand Exchange, so I will be able to access that area as well. I can both kill NPCs or PK players for upgrades, as long as I've looted an item and once it's open for purchase so let's get started in the last episode we entered the wilderness for the first time i killed up to 271 fire giants and unlocked amongst other things a rune scimitar for future melee training then at the end we got a massive pk for 4.5 million that allowed me to get 43 prayer so i now have protection prayers in the future of this account, I will need to train a lot of Slayer and stack up Slayer points to get as many Revenant tasks as possible to receive the Vigorous Chain Mace, the Craft's Bow, and the Thamoran Scepter. But before I really get into training all my combat stats and Slayer on top of that, I want to unlock an Amulet of Glory. The Amulet of Glory is a super good hybrid necklace that is going to speed up the melee training, range training, and mage training all at the same time. The only way of getting an Amulet of Glory in the Wilderness is to PK for it, so that is exactly what we're going to be doing in this video. Now there are two items I want to unlock before I get into PKing or just overall doing more combat on the account, and that is the Blighted Manta Ray and the Blighted Super Restore. These are dropped at pretty frequent drop rates of any revenants that you kill in the entire revenant cave. Actually, all the revenants in the entire caves have the same drops on their table, just at varying different drop rates. I decided to go for the Revenant Goblins as they only have 14 HP so they're very easy for me to kill and they have a decent drop rate of both the Blighted Manta Ray and the Blighted Super Restore. And of course Revenants drop Ether and the Bracelet of Ethereum which is going to be essential for killing Revenants in the future and charging the Revenant weapons. I also made some decent money in Battle Staves, Dragonstone Bolt Tips, Onyx Bolt Tips and actually a Rune Plate Leg drop which was worth almost 80k and actually, I need room plate legs in the future as just an unlock. That is the drop we wanted. A double blight and manta ray. These do indeed always heal 22 HP, which is basically half my HP. Oh, we did it. We finally got the super restore. This is how many kills it took. Actually, way over the drop rate. The investment have been made. We're going to be using this for Slayer and, of course, what we're going to be doing right now. Heading over to the Fountain of Rune and see if we can find any poor victims that might be able to give me an Amulet of Glory. The great thing about this area is that I can attack anyone who is level 3 to 97, so even if there are low level accounts who think they are safe, I can attack them. Oh my god, there's a guy here! Yes, we actually got an attack in. 11 damage, he's dead! Let's go, please give me the glories, please, please. Ah, oh, Ring of Wealth, but oh my god, that's 300k, I'll definitely take that. That is an unlock as well, of course, but I definitely should have brought my looting bag. Actually, you know what? I'm really happy with that because this is a teleport I can actually use above 30 wilderness. It allows me to teleport right to the Grand Exchange. Oh, we found someone! Oh, I'm so excited because this takes so long. It's like 30 minutes, 45 minutes of just world hopping between every single kill. This guy has no gear equipped, 40 HP around my level so I can attack him the entire time. Please just be the guy with glories, please. And he's dead. All right, please give me the glories. What? A changing plan is needed. I've been here now for roughly five and a half hours, and the only people I found are the ones you've seen. I am going to actually level my magic to 60, get the Flames of Samurai spell, and use it outside of the arena. This should help me kill players and actually have more options in the wilderness of areas where I can kill people for an amulet of glory. So let's get 60 magic. And the monster of choice I'm going to be leveling my magic on is actually the ice giants in the slayer cave. These have a decent chance of dropping an adamant sword which is going to be essential for my melee training in the future. These are actually not half bad as well, Mithril plate legs unlocked and I can actually use these right now but of course I'm using magic so we're going to have to wait to use them. Oh, that is the wrong adamant weapon, adamant dagger, the baby version of it, but I guess I'll unlock it. And there we go, that is the adamant sword unlocked, and I think actually, oh, I need to get it out of my looting bag, but I think actually I'm going to stop right there, I only really needed that, but now to train my magic, I think I might just do Slayer. In the first episode of this series, I did pick up a rogue task, so that is what we're going to be completing. First off, we have 86 of them to do. Ooh, you can actually make some money from these, 6,000, don't mind if I do. 
A bit of a fun fact, I guess. I can never complete a single easy clue step because there is zero wilderness steps on easy clue scrolls. And the first task is completed. Let's get another one. Oh, 86 bandits. That's actually pretty good. Wait, these drop adamant scimitars? Why did I even go for the adamant sword then? That is such a good upgrade. Even though it's really cool to see my slayer levels going up, I don't actually need slayer levels for anything in the wilderness. All I really need is the slayer points for in the future being able to skip a lot of tasks to get as many revenant tasks as I possibly can. And there we go, that is 59 magic, only one more level to go until we can get the insanely good weapon and cape. And that is task number two, completed. Alright, so another easy task, 60 Chaos Druids, I will be killing the small ones in the Edgeville dungeon, it is in a PvP area, so I am allowed to kill them. You know, actually on just this task, I'm going to do it with melee, and then I'll get 60 magic on the next one after. I need to get my melee stats up anyways, now that I have the Adamant Scimitar and the Rune Scimitar after that, and I will need it anyways for the Vigoras Chain Maze at the high end game, so just this one task with melee. Wait, why does my character have such a voluptuous dumb? Could Mithril Bolts actually be useful for ranged training in the future? If I can get a rune crossbow and get all the way up to 61 ranged somehow, I guess it could be pretty decent, but at that point I might have already PK'd someone for better bolts. I would say that was pretty successful, task completed, 15 attack and 17 strength. That is a pretty hefty task, 102 Hellhounds, but it is a pretty decent task. They are weak to magic, so this is going to be the task I get 60 magic. And there we go, that is 60 magic completed. It's time for some upgrades. It is actually extremely easy to complete the Mage Arena. All you need to have is Protector Magic, and you will take absolutely zero damage. You need to kill a boss that has a bunch of different faces, starting off really simple and ending up with a Black Demon with like 170 HP. But all the damage the boss does is magic. So you can just protect from magic and attack the boss until it dies. And that is everything you need to do. And there we go. That is the final hit on the boss. Mage Arena 1 has been completed. And there it is. The Samurai Capes. We got a bunch of them. They are completely free. So if I die losing them, it's not a big deal. And we have the Samurai Staff. Now, before I can actually use this outside of the Mage Arena, I need to do 100 casts inside of the arena. But luckily, last episode we did get Blood Runes unlocked, and the spell requires that, and I have already bought a bunch of them. So why I have to do 100 casts inside the arena is because it says you're not yet experienced enough to use the spell outside of the Mage Arena, so I just have to cast it 100 times on any of the monsters in here. So my previous max hit with Earth Blast was 15, and with the Flames of Samurak, we can hit up to 20 damage. So it is going to be a lot stronger, and there we go, that is the max hit already done. One last cast, and there we go, congratulations, I can now use it outside of the Mage Arena, and it's time to try to PK a glory. So after my previous experience with the Fountain of Rune, spending like 5 hours there seeing absolutely no one risking a glory, I decided to give a shot at the Chaos Altar again, because I was hoping that maybe someone is going to bring an Amulet of Glory and a bunch of superior Dragon Bones, which actually protects over the glory, and just get it that way. And we have the first kill, I don't think this guy had a glory unfortunately, but uh, 62k in Dragon Bones, I'll definitely take that. I don't think this guy has a glory, but I think he came from the Lava Maze, meaning that he probably has a burning amulet, and that is actually Wilderness Teleports, so maybe I can get that? Yes, he did have it, look at that, Burning Amulet 2, unfortunately that means I can't purchase them, because it needs to be a fully charged one for me to be able to buy it from the GE. But uh, that's at least two teleports I can use. I have a better idea. I just realized there's probably a bunch of bots at the Lava Dragons. And there seems to be one there already. And uh, I think they should have Glories equipped. Do they? Yes, it looks like he actually does have a Glory on him. And uh, these are probably the most free kills ever for me. I don't know if they're actually risking the Glory though. But in case they get like a Rune Kite Shield drop, they might actually start risking it. And the first guy is dead. Let's see what is going to be dropping us. St oh, wait. Staff of Fire. I was grinding that the entire last video, and I could have just gone here and killed a bot for it. That is funny. Well, that is at least the Staff of Fire unlocked. I do have a way better staff now, of course, but uh, that's pretty nice. Also, the Lava Dragon Bones, Black Dragon Hide. I don't think... This is just a lot of money, I guess. And that is another one down. Got some help by the Lava Dragon. Thank you so much. All these bots basically do nothing. Uh, Runite Bolts? Oh my god, wait. Rune Darts, Runite Bolts, Adamant Plate Body. All of these things might be really useful actually in the future. Adamant Plate Body definitely is an upgrade. 
and runite bolts and darts might be a really good way of leveling range in the future, especially darts. I guess this guy's name fits pretty well, dead NPC 241. He's now dead for chaos runes, staff of fire, yeah, nothing too special this time. By the way, these bots are coded to log out as soon as they see someone who is scald, so uh, have a look at this. Look how fast these guys log out. There's going to be a guy on my right here, and I'm right there, and he's gone. Yeah, so <laughs> it's pretty hard to actually catch them. Oh, very nice. Just been actually burying the lava dragon bones that I PK, and we have got 45 prayer and unlocked another mage prayer bonus. Oh, no way. We actually have a real player who's killing lava dragons that I can actually kill, and I think... I don't think he has a glory on. He looks like a bit of an Iron Man. I think that's an amulet of accuracy, but I could get something good from this. And he's dead. Let's see what the verdict is going to be. Can we get anything useful? Oh, we get... Wait, desert robes? That's fashion. I don't think they gave any stats. Blue wizard hat. That is actually an upgrade. And the amulet of accuracy is also an upgrade. It doesn't give great stats, but at least we have a necklace now and a hat. Guys, I am pleased to say I have figured it out. I know how to always catch these bots before they log out. The way I'm going to be doing it is like this. I am spam clicking on the screen as I world hop. And as soon as I world hop into a bot, I just auto hit it. And uh, most of the time I can actually hit them with a melee before they get to log. And honestly, this strategy of killing bots was working really well. I was getting a bunch of kills until uh, this unfortunate thing happened. Oh, you have got to be kidding me. Why is he exactly on that tile? I am... Okay, I think this is going to be the first death. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> that is the first death of the account from a PKer. After that, I actually took a break from Lava Dragons and I thought, maybe I can kill someone who is flinching the Chaos Elemental and uh, get some help from the Chaos Elemental to actually do damage to the players as well. And this guy had Proselyte, which means that he has like no magic defense and I could just destroy him. And that is it. We got the guy and I think he had a glory on him, so there is a chance. That is a lot of items. I see climbing boots. Oh, wait, Ancient Blessing. That is actually a really good item, but unfortunately no glory in there. But the only thing that I can use here that I see right now is the Ancient Blessing, which gives one prayer bonus, which is going to be super good because, I mean, that's just less prayer potions that I have to use during the grinds. Yeah, I don't think this guy is risking anything, but might as well kill everyone. You never know. This guy could have like a 10 million cash pile on him. Wait, actually, that's good. Ring of Dueling 8. As I said before, an item has to be fully charged for me to be able to buy it from the GE, and uh, that is now actually Rings of Dueling unlocked. Oh my god, no way. Wait, this guy is actually using a glory, and he's a PKer, and he has a granite sword. I'm pretty sure that the granite sword is protected over the glory. I, I need to fight this guy. This is like a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity, I feel like. I've been here for like four hours killing bots, and finally, I find someone who's actually PKing, risking a glory in my bracket. Is he going to die? Please, Lava Dragon, hit him! He's protecting from magic! I think he's using Bind. I'm not entirely sure or if that actually is Snare, but I feel like my roots are longer than his, so I might actually be able to just stick on him forever. Is this it? Is he out of food? No, he still has food! How much food do you have, man? We've been fighting for like three minutes now. No, please don't gap me! Yes, I keep getting the roots all the time. I need to get this guy. I feel like this is like the one opportunity to get a glory right now. I think he's out of food. Please, I think he's dead here. This has to be a glory. There's no way he can be protecting the glory over the granite sword. He's dead. Please give me the glory. Give me it. Yes, it's on the ground. Oh my god. Finally, we got the glory. That took me like 10 hours of hunting PKers, or mostly bots actually. And we finally found someone who was risking a glory, who was an actual PKer. This was probably the most satisfying way of getting a glory. Just look how good this is. 10 in every single attack bonus, 3 in every defense, 3 prayer bonus, 6 melee strength. That is exactly why I wanted this before I started training all my ranged and my melee. Now, with the Amulet of Glory in my possession, we can start training combat for real and get into the higher tiers of the combat brackets and PK possibly some really good gear. But that is going to be for the next episode. Thank you guys so much for watching this one, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Take care.